And then we also, of course, want to encourage you to be race conscious. Um, this is the, uh, one of the most important recommendations we have. It means that we don't ignore race. We don't uh, ignore conversations on race. Why? Because this is the life and experiences of the students that we serve. Next slide. So we have a few recommendations on, on how to do that. First, we want to be intentional about providing opportunities to engage racial and equity issues within the context of the course. Uh, now, I want to acknowledge that this does not work for all classes, depending upon the type of class that it is. But if it does, it's even better. Talk about issues of disparity. There's a lot of disparity going on right now, particularly with COVID. So being real makes for a better connection with the students. The second is give students the tools that they need to productively engage in racial dialogue in the course and make sure that you also have the tools needed to facilitate that dialogue. But let me um, give you a, a bit of a, a recommendations around this. First, expose yourself to the research on microaggressions. Daryl Ring Sue's work, uh, Chester Pierce's work on microaggressions so you understand what that is and how that's gonna manifest because it's gonna look different in an online environment. Um, and then also what we wanna do is make sure that we are engaging students in those dialogues, but we're staying present in the dialogue to monitor it and to intervene when necessary. So, and let me say something about this. Um, messages can be lost in translation, especially if you're using a text as a primary tool. So if, for example, you're engaging students in discussions about racial issues in a group chat rather than what would have normally been an in-person discussion. So I'd actually recommend avoiding uh, textual materials if you're going to do this. It may be better to have breakout rooms with Google Hangouts so that people can have conversations because what you don't want is somebody to send something in, a, in, uh, in textual form and have it be misconstrued because the tone, the manner in which it's meant could be um, taken out of, out of context. And whatever you do, you have to make sure that you monitor and just remember that you have a responsibility to ensure that students of color are not being microaggressed. If you also want some additional tools on this, Sean Harper's uh, Racial Justice Institute's um, help to build capacity around this. And if you want, we really recommend going to their website for the USC Race and Equity Center at race.usc.edu. That's race.usc.edu. And just remember on the next slide that when there are people, there are microaggressions. So we have to address microaggressions. And one faculty member said, you need to monitor discussion groups for microaggressions. In online classes, the discussion boards are a major point of contention. Folks make comments, many from their limited racial experiences, that tend to have all kinds of racial undertones or overtones. Many faculty don't have the skills to address those, uh, those issues. And if you don't, feel free to reach out to us. We have a bunch of resources on, on, how, on how to engage this. Um, in fact, we feel like this is probably one of our areas of specialty. Um, and then lastly, just embracing racial discourse. One person said, I'm always thinking about race and the ways that I design, teach, and interact with my students online. I intentionally infuse race into my work. I try to facilitate dialogue and pose questions that address issues of race and racism in society. We talk about these issues. We encourage you to also talk about these issues.